Yeah, Tori, I want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier, and that was climate anxiety. I think coming into the space right now and talking about the climate crisis and trying to gain an understanding and trying to help, it is it does build a lot of anxiety around yeah. around your work, right? So, and I know you're currently writing a book on climate anxiety. Um, how important is it for us to start storytelling on cr climate anxiety, and how important is it for us to um, really get it out there and just tell people, okay, what you're feeling is, 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 is normal and what we're, what we're experiencing is, is, we're all experiencing it essentially. Yeah, thank you. So I, I wanna kind of preface this by telling you where the title of my book came from. It's called, It's Not Just You, and it, it has a few meanings. It's Not Just You is a reminder that you're not alone in whatever struggles that you have. It's also a reminder that it's not just you, we need to employ intersectional perspectives to understand the climate crisis and therefore mental health. It's not just you, it's the systems that we live in. And it's not just you, we can't be employing individualism as the solution to things that ultimately really need collective care and community structures. And the reason why I say that is because when I talk about eco-anxiety, I think a lot of people are expecting me to just talk about how I'm terrified of the future. But the reality is it's not just the future, um, it's now and it's been the past and growing up in a fishing town in Hong Kong, I can guarantee you I was just as terrified then as I am now. And I think it's also very difficult for me to pry apart my eco-anxious experience with my predisposition to mental health struggles, whatever that might be. You know, I am your classic person with ADHD. I have highs and lows. I get distracted all the time. <laughs> and um, with that it comes a caveat of experiences that I can't just attribute to the state of the planet. It's so interconnected. It's so you know, hard to think about how my depression and my anxiety is separate from the capitalistic system that we live in, from the fact that so many of us are burnt out, we're worried about the future, you know, we're not being able to afford things. We're, we're in the midst of a, a crisis at the moment in the UK with rising energy bills, you know? And so how is my mental health separate from all of that? So by writing, I really wanted to humanize this issue as one that is perhaps unique in some ways, but also one that doesn't have to look the same to everyone. I think eco-anxiety is a very personal thing, but it's also something that, you know, there are some caveats that need to be explored, especially with the systems that we're in. So that for me was why I decided I wanted to, to write about it. <coughs> very interesting. And um, Clover, you have a uh, nonprofit that mobilizes uh, mindsets for climate, uh, climate action. So obviously storytelling for you is, is, is a very important piece. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Tori touched on something which really resonated before, which was this sense of like trying to run away from those difficult emotions. And I know that when I first declared to my parents over um, dinner one night uh, that I wanted to be an environmentalist. Um, we were eating a roast dinner and I said my first action is to become vegetarian, which my um, French dad, who's a chef, was like not super excited about. Um, but, you know, I, I was really in tune with those difficult emotions, but I really thought that I had to like beat them into submission. I thought that they were a weakness. And if I let the door open to my anxiety and my grief, then I would fall in and never come out. And I was forced to fall into those feelings during the fires back home in Australia, where every day I was waking up to the headlines of how many billions of animals had been incinerated. I was seeing the Instagram stories from my friends of them standing on the roofs of their homes trying to keep the flames at bay. And I realized that I couldn't keep performing this mental gymnastics. I realized that eco-anxiety was the fuel that motivated me every single day, but it was also the reminder that I am human and that I am awake and not asleep to this crisis. And so for us at Force of Nature, everything that we do is normalizing this conversation around eco-anxiety, recognizing that it is a shared generational experience and yet it's really different for young people, whether you know, you're in a bubble of privilege and climate change is a perceived thing or it's something that you're living through, right? So it's this whole diversity of experience and recognizing that one of the most powerful things beyond talking about these feelings is coming together in community and realizing that we're not alone, right? Um, exactly, you know, the title of Tori's book. Um, so we 
we've just developed the kind of spaces and the tools and containers to help young people have those conversations and then to really think critically about how is my eco-anxiety an indicator for what I care about so that I know where I want to channel my energy and, and how I want to show up in activism. And Maya Rose, you have your book coming out um, in July, I believe. I've already pre-ordered it on Amazon. Bird Girl, do you want to give us, we have to wrap up for today's panel, but do you want to give us a quick overview of what you'll be talking about in your new book? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's called Bird Girl. It's out in like two weeks, which is terrifying. Um, and I feel like I've, I don't know, graduated to like a fully fledged storyteller now. But I originally, I'm very into um, bird watching and nature, which is how I first engaged with environmental issues when I was a kid. That was sort of my routine. Um, and I originally wanted to write a book about birds because I really like birds. Um, and it ended up as something that is far more deeply personal than that, which was very unexpected. But it's something that explores a lot about, um, you know, I, I suppose growing up in an age of you know, environmental crisis, like how, you know, your life shapes your activism, things like that, but also like ended up as a very honest conversation around mental health and growing up with mental health and um, I suppose the relationship that that's had in my um, family and things like that. But sorry, I know that we're like totally running out of time, but thank no, you. Amazing, amazing.